The Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Keeping the Faith with your host, Senior Fellow Joe Wolcott. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish." Welcome, everyone, to this first episode of Keeping the Faith, our no- most recent podcast with the Institute for Faith and Freedom. So, what is this thing that you have tuned into? Well, like I just said, this is Keeping the Faith. This is a faith based podcast where we will talk about things relating to Christianity. Uh, the name is drawn specifically from 2 Timothy 4 7, which says this. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Paul wrote this particular verse, and just the whole book of 2 Timothy, near the end of his life. Paul's life was one that demonstrated the goodness and glory of God. God used him to write 13 of the 66 inspired books that we have today. His testimony is truly wonderful. And we're running a race right now, not unlike the one Paul describes himself as having completed. We are in a constant battle of sorts to pull on some of the war imagery from the Bible. Uh, Conservatism, as is a cornerstone of the Institute for Faith and Freedom, finds its foundation in Christianity, as Dr. Kengor likes to point out in many of our events. So, yeah, my hope with this show is that we will really zero in and focus on what the root of our belief is as people at Grove City, as people that follow the Institute for Faith and Freedom and the values that we put out. Uh, As an exhortation to that degree... I would point you to Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. My hope is that you will find this podcast edifying, informative, and challenging at times. If nothing else, I want this show to whet your appetite for Christianity. But enough about the basics of what this show is. Who am I, and why the heck should you be listening to me? Well, my name is Joseph Wolcott. I'm a senior here at Grove City College, and I am a marketing fellow with the Institute for Faith and Freedom. I'm a history major with a minor in political science, and I come from the great city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. As an additional note that's relevant to this podcast, I'm a third-generation pastor's kid. My grandfather, my great-grandfather on my mom's side was a man named Raymond Miners. He was a pastor in the OPC, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, at a little church up in Schenectady, New York, and he served from 1938 to 1980. My maternal grandfather is a man named Dan Miners, and he is a retired Baptist minister. He retired from the ministry in 2014. And my dad is a pastor in the PCA, the Presbyterian Church in America, in the Harrisburg area, where we've been incredibly blessed to be there for the better part of 20 years. Um, That is not the path that I wanted for myself uh, for a good chunk of my life. I came to Grove City College wanting to do 
law school. I'd gotten involved in the political sphere. I'd become very passionate about it. And in many ways, I am still very passionate about that sort of stuff. But I'd left the idea of going to law school behind by the end of sophomore year. Just, there were a lot of reasons for that, but the primary one was the more I studied the community and the practice itself, the more I realized that it wasn't the right fit for me. And that left me in a little bit of a weird place. For the better part of about a year and a half, I was wandering somewhat directionless, not exactly sure what God's will for my life was. Um, yeah, I, it was just a lot of prayer. It was something that was weighing heavy on me for that entire period. Um, very long story short, some doors closed, others opened, and I got some answers to prayers such that I feel confident that where the Lord is calling me is pastoral ministry. Uh, it's, it's a topic I'm very passionate about. I, I love the Bible. I love God. I love studying church history. I love studying the works of the great theologians of a bunch of different traditions. Like there is a lot of rich, good stuff that really builds you up when you read it. But yeah, the, the more I realized I loved that and that was something that I could be very comfortable dedicating my life to, the more certain I became in that calling. Uh, and this is a pretty recent revelation of mine. So I haven't hammered out any of the major details. I haven't really done seminary applications yet or anything there, but I know wherever I end up, I'm going to end up in one of the Presbyterian or Reformed churches. It's, it's the background I come from. It's where I'm convinced in my convictions. As I've gotten older, the more I've studied the Bible, the more I've studied the great theologians, the confessions, church history, the more I've become convicted in my reformed stances. And that's, that's me, and I'm unapologetically so. But even if you aren't with me theologically, I hope you stick around and critically engage with the content that I'm going to be putting out here. Bottom line is, I'm glad you're here, and I appreciate the viewership of this show. But that's enough about me. Uh, we really need to get down here to the details of what this show is going to be. So you know, is this something that's worth investing my time in? Um, I would say yes, and I hope you agree with me on that. But here's just a basic um, order of what I'm looking to accomplish with this podcast. So put simply, and I think this has come out a little bit already in what I've talked about, I am a huge church history and theology nerd, and this will definitely show in some of the content that we'll be producing. Uh, some of the episodes will be more one-on-one, -on -one, me talking directly to all of you who are viewing this about various biblical doctrines and ideas. I might take advantage of some episodes to lay out a biblical and historical case for some of the convictions I've come to, and I, I hope you engage with that charitably. I will certainly seek to charitably engage with positions that I'm not necessarily with. Uh, we'll have some special themed episodes. I have a few big ideas in the works that I'm hoping will, um, will really, really catch your attention. I'll, I'll leave you hanging on that, but um, stay tuned if you want to find out more about that sort of thing. I'm also hoping to do some interviews with some of my fellow uh, fellows at the Institute for Faith and Freedom, as well as some of the scholars. I'm particularly interested in people who have a very diverse theological background, people who have very interesting and complicated testimonies, because the body of Christ is a of a very diverse composition. And I think it's, it's really edifying to sit down and understand where people came from and where they 
ended up when it comes to their positions in Christianity. I also want to note that that's what the main body of content will be for the podcast. But I also plan on opening every episode with a selection from the Psalms. Uh, I'm hoping to go through it expositionally. Uh, So we started with Psalm 1 today, episode 2, we'll do Psalm 2, etc. and so forth. I know I'm not going to be around doing enough episodes to make it through all of the Psalms, but we're going to stick to that format at least while I'm around here. And then I plan on ending every episode with a brief selection from the Heidelberg Catechism, which is one of the great historic Reformed confessions. So just a little historical note on the Heidelberg Catechism. The Heidelberg Catechism was written in Heidelberg, Germany, hence the name of the catechism. It was created at the request of the elector Frederick III, who ruled over the providence of the Palatinate from 1558 to 1576. The primary writer was a professor named Zacharias Ursinus, and he had a little help from a theologian named Caspar Olivia. The catechism itself is broken up into 52 Lord's Days. So similar to going expositionally through the Psalms, I'm hoping with each episode we will hit a different Lord's Day of the catechism in order. Um, I picked this particular catechism because it is where I'm at doctrinally. I read through the Heidelberg Catechism and I don't see anything I take particular exception to. It's of the Reformed tradition. But it's also notable for its tone. The tone is very peaceful, very pastoral. The content of it, the due to the historical setting, was such that it was meant to build bridges across traditions. Um, of note in that immediate context, for example, the Lutherans. The Lutherans would have taken exception to some of the doctrine within the catechism, but the catechism is very generous in reaching a hand out and offering very gentle correction on places where it found other traditions to be in error. So that's one of the reasons I chose that. And developing that idea a bit further, there are some who have argued in American church history, for example, um, the 1800s Presbyterian minister, John Williamson Nevin, he argued that the Heidelberg Catechism is one of the great ecumenical documents of church history. So I figured it would be nice to end the episodes with summaries of historic Christian doctrine that is created in such a way to build bridges. And I, I hope that that really comes across to you who are watching and listening. So I, there's a lot I could say about the Heidelberg Catechism. You could easily devote an entire episode to it. For the sake of brevity, I will direct you to a YouTube video put out. Just go to YouTube, search Joel Beakey, spelled B-E-E-K-E, Heidelberg Catechism, Rhine River. That should bring you to a lecture that Dr. Beakey gave about the history and the legacy and the content of the Heidelberg Catechism. So look that up if you really want to know more about what it is I'm going to be reading for you at the end of the show here. So that's all I have for you as far as main content of the podcast. I'll move on to the Heidelberg Catechism here, and hopefully uh, we'll get into the really interesting stuff that you guys will hopefully tune in for in the next episode and following. Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 1. Question 1. What is your only comfort in life and death? Answer. That I am not my own, but belong with body and soul, both in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood. He has set me free from all the power of the devil. He also preserves me in such a way that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready from now on to live for him. Question 2. 
What do you need to know in order to live and die in the joy of this comfort? Answer. Three things. First, how great my sins and misery are. Second, how I am delivered from all my sins and misery. Third, how I am to be thankful to God for such deliverance. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave questions in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to take any suggestions for topics you guys might like to see to answer any questions to engage with disagreements you guys have. If you're listening on Spotify, go give this show a follow. Also give a follow to our Liberty Mail podcast if you're interested in the political sphere of things. As far as YouTube is concerned, subscribe to the Institute for Faith and Freedom channel, hit the notification button, and hit the like.